Greetings, dancers. Oh. Ooh. Going Korean again. This time, we are not making sushi. We are making kimbap. And that is not Korean sushi. Let's get this straight. Just because it looks a bit like sushi. Well, you can't see it yet because I made it. But because it looks like sushi, it is not sushi. Big difference. Well, I wouldn't say big difference, but there's differences. All right. So we are making Korean kimbap or gimbap. You can say either. Now, you may have noticed a rather large saucepan of cooked rice here. You need to cook the rice in advance because a bit like sushi, this is not sushi, kimbap. We use rice, okay? And we eat it cold. Although, actually, having said that, you can have it hot, but we'll come to that. Now, I got this from a Korean lady that discovered her channel. And she's making tuna kimbap. And she said in it, use four cups of rice. So I cook four cups of rice. And I'm keep thinking, that's a bloody lot of rice. Because essentially we're going to make four rolls. And we want about one cup of rice per roll. I mean, I double checked after I cooked this huge amount of rice. I realised she said you want four cups of cooked rice. So you probably want just under two cups. I couldn't be bothered converted grams. I thought it's, it's just dry, so I use cups. Now you probably want just under two cups. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transfer four cups into this bowl. Okay, and then I just imagine we're going to be eating rice for a long time afterwards. Um, it's just simply uh, plain old white rice. Okay, um, use about double the amount of water to the rice. And then just let it cook away. It took about well, just under 15 minutes, covered over. Once you get to the ball, cut it over. And then, oh, I found me microwave rice cooker. I thought I'd given up on that bugger. Um, I was looking for a lid from the saucepan. And I said, what's that there? It's me microwave rice cooker. Whew. Didn't use it for this, mind you, because I thought, oh, that never have all that eight cups or four cups of uncooked rice in it. Right, so... I'm going to put that there. Now bear in mind, if you're going to use rice that you've cooked, very careful about what you do with it. Okay? Um, it wants to be chilled, so you want to make sure it got cold as such before you put it in the fridge. And you want to make sure when you reheat it, you completely reheat it. Even then I'd be a bit wary. So... Here's the rice that's going to go into our gimbap. So we're now just going to season it. And this is where one of the differences is between sushi and gimbap. If I was making sushi, I would be seasoning the rice with vinegar. White wine vinegar or rice wine vinegar. Okay, salt and sugar but we're making gimbap and gimbap we put salt in it we don't put the sugar in the rice but we use toasted sesame toasted sesame oil so i'm going to have about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and then i'm going to have a teaspoon of this toasted sesame oil. Shall I make a little bit more? 
because I'm feeling like getting much like Okay. And we're just going to mix that together. I think there's gone a bit pink. Oh, that's a salt in it. <laughs> oh, God, I'm in over there. I thought for a minute there, I thought that um, sesame oil has done some sort of reaction on pink, and then of course I'm using my pink Himalayan salt. So, that essentially is our rice season. So, like I said, it's different from Japanese sushi. Now, both sushi and gimbap, or kimbap, you can say it by the way, um, is wrapped like a roll in seaweed sheets. So in Japan, they're known as nori, which just so happens to be what this one's called, this is called, but it's exactly the same, but in Korean, it's gim. Hence the gimbap. Now we're making tuna gimbap. Now, actually, old Manchi, I think I pronounced that right, the Korean who runs this channel, said it was one of her first ever videos she put up in 2007 when she started her YouTube channel. Um, and that was back in the day pre HD. These are all 4K, by the way. You might not see them as 4K on. Um, some of the platforms you're on, but they're all recorded 4K and they post up 4K. But anyway, that's an aside. But what she said, it was so popular, people were go commenting about her tuna gimbap, uh, chamchi gimbap, or chamchi kimbap, um, that she decided to remake it, but in HD this time. So, I think that's just about got that all mixed in there. So we're going to set our rice to one side and now we're going to start working on one of our fillings, which of course we're calling it tuna gimbap. So the first filling is going to be our tuna one. Got a small resourceman and into that um, I've, I've put two cans of tuna. I like my tuna. She's saying about 142 grams worth and one tin's about 130 odd. So, bugger it, I'm doing two. Uh, I like my tuna. Um, so I'm gonna chuck that into that saucepan. Okay. And then just put that away for a minute. And then one, one or two cloves of garlic. And we just want to dice them up. Got me big Chinese chopper. I know we're not in China, we're in Korea. Um, using that and we're going to chuck that into that tuna mix now since you gimbap the gim part comes from the name for the seaweed sheets okay um, and just like sushi, but it's not sushi, it's served in bite-sized pieces. Okay, so we make the roll and we slice it up uh, about half inch or so thick, uh, just like you would do sushi, but it's not sushi. But because of obviously how similar it is, So I'm now going to put about a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper in there. Because of the similarities, some suggestion that did this originate from Japan was this essentially Korean version of gimbap. Um, others just say it's nothing to do with that. This is um, essentially a modernised version of something that was produced during, I can't pronounce the word, era. Um, but certainly Korea was at one time um, under Japanese rule. It was a Japanese colony. So, you know, there's good evidence it could be 
to do with the Japanese. Now I'm going to add a tablespoon of sesame oil, toasted sesame oil again. Okay. And we're now just going to heat that up and we want to, oh, and we're also putting in it, before I forget, a tablespoon of soy sauce. Okay, and we're now just going to heat that through. Okay, the soy sauce adds a bit of saltiness and a bit of colour. Okay, it's all very dry. Now, by the way, the cans of tuna, um, these are ones in brine. Weirdly, when you watch her video, there's a lump of pale tuna there. Uh, when you watch her video, she's obviously using cans of tuna that are in brine, but in the recipe, she talks about using um, preferably tuna that's in oil. But I think that's an error in her recipe because she does also slip up. Because having said that the rice is not seasoned with vinegar in her recipe, uh, she inadvertently puts vinegar instead of sesame oil. So we're just going to cook this through for a, about a minute or two. This is almost done. I started by telling you then I forgot to mention it. Um, when you open the cans you need to drain it and what I did, same as she did, was I just tipped it out onto some kitchen towel and just squeezed out as, uh, some moisture. Um, I think I might have gone a little bit more um, overboard than she did um, because this is quite dry. Um, you can see a bit of steam coming off. So at this point, I'm now going to turn the heat off. It's had a couple of minutes cooking. And we're going to add, now this is optional. Um, we're going to add some honey. Uh, we're going to add about a tablespoon of honey to give it like a salty and a sweet flavour. But if you don't really want the honey in it, you can leave that out. We're putting it in. Um, so it's off the heat, but the residual heat should be enough for us to better mix that all in. And that then can be set to one side and that's our tuna filling. Okay, now there are some other fillings going in there, um, but actually the word gimbap the gim is the seaweed, the bap is actually referring to the rice. Now, gim baps can be filled with vegetables, they can be filled with meat, um, fish. Um, essentially, it's just a bit like sushi, but it's not sushi. It's just this roll of, of seasoned rice wrapped around whatever filling you choose to use. So, that's the tuna filling done. So, only one we've got to do. Two more fillings to do, but they're not really complicated like this one. Now, I think I just said there are two more fillings, actually three. Um, we're gonna have some of these crab sticks, seafood sticks, they're not really crab. Um, now, in her um, recipe, um, I don't know whether it's because they're Korean, um, but they're long ones, and they're about the length of a sheet of nori, uh, gim, gim, not sushi, gim. Um, so we're going to use two, okay. Um, so I've got about eight there. Because remember, we're making four, so I've got two per sheet. The other thing that goes into it, or one of the other things that goes into it, I just realised that they're half. You bastard. That's a bit of a con. Um, this is pickled radish. It's yellow pickled radish. It does say half size, I should have read that. But it doesn't really matter. There's more than enough here. Um, and we're going to make some of that. Now, as that happens, that is basically the length of our sheets. The one she had were actually like whole, round, um, and they were longer. Now, um, 
what we're going to do first is we're going to cut these up. So I'm cutting the top off quite near the top because um, any unused stuff we can put back in. Probably not cut that low enough now. Um, we can put back into the fridge, back into the, the brine as such that it's in. Yeah, I didn't quite cut that low enough. Have another go. And then you can use it uh, for other things now. What I should have done before I did that was get a little bit of kitchen roll. Okay. And I'm going to take one of them out to begin with. That is for hardly any brine in there at all. And what we want to do, get them scissors out of the way, is cut this into some slices. Now you can eat this as it is. Okay. The one she had was like swimming in brine. So actually I don't know if you really need the um, the what's name kitchen roll. Um, so I'm gonna take this and cut that a bit wonky, didn't I? I'm just gonna cut that into some strips. Can't see what I might do. Just leave that bit. That might be two of them, and then. I'll just trim that off the edge there. There's three. That's a bit wonky at that end. And there's four. Now, you can eat it like that. It's quite nice and crunchy. A little bit of a, you know, vinegary tang, but it's not like eating pickled onions. You know, well, even those pickled onions today are like shy, don't they? So, you can dice some of this up and serve it as a little compliment with your gimmat. But one that we're now just going to put these to one side at the moment. And I'm just going to seal this up and put it in a fridge and we'll keep that bit for stacking on. On a skillet or a frying pan like I've got, just gonna put some heat on there. And then we're gonna use some vegetable oil and I'm gonna add, uh, what that? about two, two teaspoons of vegetable oil. One, two. Okay, and we're just gonna heat that through and then what we're going to do is we're going to put our crab sticks in white side down first. Okay. Um, just heat some through. I know we're having this thing cold, but it's sort of, in a way, sort of helps make it a little bit, I say crunchy, but a bit more crunchy on the outside. And you might have noticed, I've decided I was getting fed up with that beer. So I've switched to a good old Australian, because Australia's nearer to South Korea than England. Um, me jammy red room. It is a bit, I've said this before, it is a bit sweet, but I quite like this. So that oil is just coming up to heat. So we're just gonna lay, like I say, she used these ones at least twice as long as this. Um, we're just going to lay it white side down in that oil and we're just going to let that sort of crispen up a bit. Now, don't need that bowl anymore. So, um, these are often eaten, these gimbaps are often eaten at picnics and things like that. You might take them in your lunchbox. Um, again, along with some damage the pickled radish um, but the word gimbap didn't really come into sort of use until about 20th century prior to that it's believed it was something 
known as um, which was a Japanese thing, a boksan, or something like that. So, once they're done, we're going to flip them, and then I'm just going to transfer them to the plate, and then our final filling is avocados, but I'm not going to prepare them yet, because obviously if you're not careful with avocados, they start going brown, and you don't want your brown avocados in your gimbaps, do you? So I was telling you how the word gimbap you know, it didn't really come into sort of its use until about the 20th century. Um, about that time, prior to that and about that time, the word noramaki was used, which was a Japanese term. OK, but then as part of trying to clear out anything to do with, you know, the Jap Japanese colonization, colonization of uh, Korea, um, it was like we can't use norimaki because that's Japanese. So that's out the window, it's give back. But like I say, um, quite sort of what the origin was, don't really know for sure. Oh, it stopped falling over a little bit. So I'm just gonna do them a little bit more on that white side. Um, pardon me. Now, I told you gim and bap it is like the seaweed sheets and the rice. I've told you you can use lots of different things. Some have cheese in it. Seems a bit weird to me. Um, and some of the fillings are the same as what you might have in sushi. But again, it's the way the season uh, the fillings are seasoned that makes it differ from that one's falling apart. Don't you do that to me, little kid? Well, I think one of them was falling apart anyway before I put it in it. Oh no, that one's falling apart. I think I better flip them. Um, I'm just going to flip them over onto the red side, but we're not going to leave them on the red side for too long. We don't want to lose the redness. Okay, you can see a slight little bit of brown in there. Um, what was I saying? I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, I was saying about the seasonings um, being different. Um, but they're both similar. Actually, what I'm going to do now is why that's still in there. I'm just going to lay this radish in there because we're going to do the similar thing. We're just going to sort of fry it on each side lightly. Um, both sushi. Where's my glass on? Oh, I moved it. Almost picked up that. Now that's kimchi. We've mentioned kimchi before. We're going to have that a little bit of that as an accompaniment, uh, like a pickled uh, hot. Uh, pickle, if you like, Korean. Um, you don't have to have that, but well, we're just going to add a little bit of white product. I don't like it, but I'll have it. But the whole point of gimbap and sushi is you make them fresh and you eat them that day. Um, if you leave them, particularly if you put them in the fridge overnight, you know, people think, oh, I'll put the sushi in the fridge overnight and I'll have it tomorrow. Big no no. And the same gimbap because the rice tends to dry out completely different so you don't keep it in the fridge you eat it but if you have to because you've made so much you don't eat it the next day as it is you dip it in egg and you fry it and that helps rejuvenate, if you like, the egg, uh, sorry, the rice. And obviously it imparts a different flavour on it. But that's what you do with your old gimbap. Lightly um, toss it in egg, you know, beaten egg. Lightly fry it, eat it like that. You never know, we might have some left over. We could try that tomorrow. Well, yeah, Randall might just eat it as it is. Right, so I'm just doing the same here. I'm going to flip that a minute, put that in plate. And then, time to prepare the avocado. Our next trick is to do our avocado. Okay, so cut around the avocado. Do it 
get rid of the stay. I just realised actually I'm going to need a smaller knife because I want to score a little knife. Just going to score the avocado into slices and then we're just going to use a spoon to try and make sure we lift out those slices and then I'm just going to transfer them to that plate. Now, um, you probably get away with two avocados, okay? Um, so you've got like half an um, avocado per given back, if you like. Um, getting all avocado, get off you little shite. Oh, got another one there, I? I've got that now. Uh, take that back when I said, oh shit, just cut myself. Um, I think, or stab myself anyway. I had two of. Um, so as soon as I've got these done, okay, I'm just going to then take that lemon that I've got there and I'm going to squirt about half a lemon over the top of that just to help stop it going brown. Um, So, just, oops, there's that little bit of stalk or whatever it is in the end. Um, and then, we are ready to start assembling our gimbap. So for this you're going to need a mat. Um, I hesitate to say a sushi mat, because you're not sushi. Okay, um, but essentially if you've got a bamboo or well, you don't have to be bamboo, but if you've got your sushi uh, rolling mat, that's what you're going to use. Okay, so there's my avocado. Like I can say, my next, I'll use this one for now, is just to take a squeeze of lemon juice over the top. So it might be I don't need all this rice, but what we're going to do is we're going to take, divide the rice up into four to begin with, okay, and spilling it everywhere. We're now just going to, a bit like if we were making sushi, well now if you remember with sushi, um, it tends to be a bit sticky. Actually I probably will want all that, I don't know. Um, and what I forgot to do, Get yourself a little dish of water, and just like you would do if you were making sushi, you would just wet your fingers so the rice don't stick to you. Now, we essentially are going to. Bloody nori's coming apart. Uh, sorry, the gim's coming apart. We're just going to spread. Right, that's just about one quarter of all that rice, and we're just going to spread that. Now, notice I'm leaving a strip there uncovered, okay? But we essentially are going to bring the rice up to this bottom edge, okay? That bit of green in there, that's a bit that broke off the corner. Okay, we're just going to bring that up to that edge. Okay, and we leave that strip there ready um, for rolling. Now, I now take one of my strips of radish and I lay that there. Notice I've left some rice there. I'm just gonna put a little bit in there because there's a few gaps there. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some avocado and I'm going to lay my avocado there now I've left a little gap there and then I'm going to take two of my crab sticks and place that there so the missing bit he says just washing his hands the missing bit is we're now going to take a quarter of that tuna mix and that's going to go in the gap 
and every fucking where else, by the looks of it. In that gap between the radish and everywhere fucking else. And the avocado. Now, we're going to attempt to roll it. Now, just like as if we were rolling sushi, but we're not. We start by pulling this over give it a bit of a squeeze okay and then we're going to carry on rolling it over again a little bit of a squeeze and then keep going till it's all nicely gone all over your oven I'll pop it down in front of me oh and down in front of me okay now we can unroll it and there you go there's your first roll now don't worry about the ends okay i'll just poke that avocado in there it shouldn't come out that much and so now we're just going to clear this fucking mess up and i'm going to repeat that three more times okay um it might be to be honest that i've got i won't have enough radish i've only done enough radish for four but it might be if I've got a spare whatever, I might just roll a couple of others with just other bits in it. Um, we haven't quite finished yet, okay? But we're just gonna set that to one side. So once I've got the others rolled, I'll show you what we do just to finish off before we slice it. I've um, divided these up like this because I did three. And then the fourth one, I suddenly realized I forgot to put the tuna in it. So there's not a tuna give back. And then the final one, um, all I had left really was avocado and obviously the spare tuna. So before we finish, what we're going to do is I'm just going to, whoops, perhaps I went a bit overboard on that one. Just going to brush. And this is another way in which this differs from sushi. We're just going to brush this over with some sesame oil. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it round and just sort of brush it over all of it and then we're going to give it a light sprinkle of some toasted sesame seeds so this is when we're now going to slice it so we take our first one we just trim the end off okay now you can make the ends a bit thicker if you wanted to. Um, oops, that one didn't cut. And we're cutting them for about a third to a half an inch in size. Now, you've got to do it, but you might want to just wet your knife every now and again um, so it doesn't stick. And let me just Put these ones out. So there you go. There you can see our finished gimbap. You can see the avocado, tuna, um, the pickled radish, which actually looks a little bit like the um, avocado wrapped in rice. Okay, so I'm just gonna slice up some more, add a little bit of kimchi, and we're gonna have a taste. So here we have our final tuna gimbap. I'm trying to use chopsticks, but I don't get useless in it. Um, actually, that one there looks like it's lost a bit of the tuna. But here's some kimchi, which I didn't make. I bought in a jar. So the other difference between this and sushi is that if you want the heat, you have kimchi, not wasabi. So... Cheers. Got the chewiness of the gim, seaweed. And taste of avocado and taste of tuna. I think the pickled radish is a little bit lost because I just had that kimchi. So I didn't really notice that so much. A 
but it's not sushi. But it is very obviously very reminiscent of eating kimchi. Just as a little aside, fit in with the shirt. This is one of her older videos. I said she'd remade this from a, a, one of her first ones. And I suddenly thought, what number of video is this? But it was 503, so it didn't quite fit in. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But there you go. Your Korean tuna gimbap. It's not sushi.